Cosmoverse 2022, what's up? I'm uh, Nick White, I'm COO of Celestia Labs. And in keeping with the vibe and the culture of Cosmoverse, I'm gonna start out with a little rap. And it goes like this. It was all a dream. I used to read Bitcoin Magazine. Jay, Ethan, and Sonny, and Zaki in the limousine. Hanging white papers on my wall. Every Saturday compounding my Adam staking rewards. All right, <laughs> that's all I got, but, but uh, yeah, stay tuned for Cosmoverse 2023. There'll be more where that came from. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> on a more serious note, I'm here to talk about modular blockchains and why I think that they're really critical to the Cosmos endgame, to realizing the vision that we all believe in and that we're all here for. So to start with, we have to start with a question, what are blockchains for? This is an important question because depending on how you answer it, you'll end up building very different infrastructure. So each crypto community has a different philosophy, a different answer to this question, and it leads to a different blockchain architecture. So the Bitcoin community believes that blockchains are for creating digital gold. So they built a very simple but effective protocol to realize that goal. The Ethereum community believes that blockchains are for building a world computer. So they built the first programmable blockchain uh, to realize that goal. But all of us here are part of the Cosmos community. And we believe in something different. And as Ethan says, we believe that blockchains are community computers. And that's a very different philosophical foundation for what we want to build. We believe that blockchains are meant to empower communities, meant to empower groups of people with shared goals to collaborate and cooperate in ways that they couldn't without blockchains. So with that as a starting point, the Cosmos community has built a very different uh, blockchain infrastructure to the other uh, blockchain ecosystems out there. So the first goal was that we want to be able, for, we, wanted to be, we want any community to be able to boot up their own blockchain computer. And to realize that goal, we have built Tendermint, which is a proof of stake consensus protocol. And we've also built the Cosmos SDK, which helps you build the state machine, the execution layer of your blockchain. Um, so that's a great start, but that's not the complete vision. So in addition to that, we also want to be able for those uh, blockchain community computers to connect with one another and to interoperate so that they can become an internet of blockchains. So it's not like if every community computer was isolated on its own, uh, it would really limit the functionality and the utility of blockchains. It's kind of like a world where countries can't have trade. We want these blockchains to, to interoperate. And so to that end, people have been working on interchain standards like IBC, interchain accounts, and this helps us develop a common system, a common language for all these blockchains to communicate with each other. And it's pretty amazing that all of these things have already been built, and they're live, and they're working, and this is what we have today. From the launch of the Cosmos Hub in 2019 to today in 2022, we have over 50 community computers and there's been billions of dollars transacted over IBC. So it's been built and it works. And this is a monumental achievement of research and engineering to get us here. And it's, it's very humbling that we have achieved this. Um, but what's even more humbling is that this is just the beginning and we have a long, long way to go. When I look at this map, it actually reminds me of the early days of the internet. So this is the internet circa 1982. There are also around maybe 50 different servers around the globe connecting and sharing information. But no one could have predicted that 40 years later, in 2022, the internet would look like this. A rich, densely connected network of websites and an unfathomable amount of information being transferred between them every day. 
And I think that the Cosmos endgame actually looks a lot like this, except you replace websites with blockchains, with community computers. And you replace information exchange with value exchange. And so we're not just going to have maybe you know, 50 or a few hundred blockchains or community computers. I think we're going to have hundreds of thousands, if not eventually millions. And we're not just going to have billions of dollars transacted over IBC. I think we're going to have trillions. So as much as I'd like to stand up here and tell you that the things that we've built are enough to get us to this end game, to this end vision of Web3, of the Internet of Blockchains, um, the reality is that there's a few fundamental technological barriers that will prevent us from getting there. The first of which is that there is still high overhead for people to launch new blockchains. So even though Tendermint and the Cosmos SDK makes it very, very easy to build your own software for your blockchain, you still have to bootstrap a new consensus network. So you have to get a set of validators, you have to issue a proof of stake token, you have to then launch and maintain that network. So it's a high overhead. Um, and it's preventing the growth of the interchain at the speed that it could. This is kind of like in Web 2, if every time you wanted to launch a website uh, or a web app, you had to literally buy a server and hook it up and maintain it in your home or your office. That's not how Web 2 works today. Web 2 has adopted things like cloud computing that you have this shared uh, resource like infrastructure in which you can kind of one click deploy web apps and websites. And the other problem is that there's no shared security in the interchain. So uh, even though IBC is state of the art and in my opinion the most secure, uh, well thought through bridging protocol that in existence, um, it still inherently incurs counterparty risk. When you open an IBC connection between two different chains, the, it, you're assuming that the other chain is honest uh, and, that, and is secure. And if that assumption fails, then funds can be stolen and all kinds of things can go wrong. And so while this works today, it's not enough to necessarily get us to the end game. It's kind of like, um, you know, in the internet, um, in the internet today, we run everything on HTTPS, not HTTP, because you get security by default. You don't have to worry about when you're sending information to a website whether or not it's going to be secure. It just is. So to add a little more, I guess, context to this uh, sort of trade-off, it's, it's uh, useful to think about the Ethereum world computer model compared to the Cosmos community computer model for blockchains. So in Ethereum, you actually get this shared security and ease of deployment for free. Um, you know, you, every application that's on the Ethereum blockchain doesn't have to worry if the other application is secure. Uh, it just is because they share the same consensus network. And when you want to deploy a new application on Ethereum, um, you don't have to bootstrap a new network or a new proof of stake coin. You just write your smart contract code and you deploy it. So that's great, but unfortunately the world computer model doesn't have two qualities that are very, very important from a community computer standpoint. So the community computer, we believe that uh, every community should be able to have its own blockchain computing, uh, access to blockchain computing. And if every community in the world is supposed to have that, there's no way that it could ever run on one single shared blockchain. Just, it's just not scalable enough. And the second thing that's missing is sovereignty. If you share, if every application of every community shares one single world computer, then fundamentally they don't have the ability to fork their application and their chain. They don't have the ability to customize that chain for the type of community computing that they want to do. And so Cosmos correctly prioritized scalability and sovereignty uh, instead of shared security and ease of deployment. And that's led us to the world we're in today, uh, which is a really exciting world to be in. But I believe that in order for us to get to the end game, we need to build infrastructure that can actually achieve all four of these things at the same time. And so then the, the question is, you know, is that possible? Well, if interestingly, 
if you go back to the origins of Cosmos, uh, apparently in 2016, um, Jay and Ethan had an idea called Super Tanker, which did try to achieve all four of those properties at the same time. And it, according to Zucky, it resembled the modular blockchain architecture that I'm, I'm going to do, introduce very, very soon. Um, however, unfortunately, this design of Super Tanker had to be abandoned because they realized that there were fundamentally two key problems that needed to be solved in order for it to be possible. The first problem that needed to be solved is called the data availability problem. What it is, essentially, is that whenever you try to scale the block space in a layer one blockchain, as you increase the block size, it fundamentally causes centralization. So people were looking for a way to scale block size without causing centralization. And this problem, the first solution, was proposed by one of the co-founders of Celestia, Mustafa al Basam, in 2019 in this paper, where he proposed something called data availability sampling, where for the first time you could actually increase the block size of a blockchain uh, while remaining decentralized, so long as uh, in proportion, you could scale it in proportion to the number of nodes in the network. So this is a huge breakthrough in blockchain scaling research. The other problem that needed to be solved was layer two scaling. Essentially, the, the, that problem boils down to how can you build a, a, a blockchain or like a layer two system that inherits security on, from, from another layer one blockchain? So how can you build systems that inherit security from something else? And this problem was solved by John Adler in 2019 uh, when he proposed a design for something that we now call roll-ups. And it was the combination of solving these two key problems that together um, unlocked a new design paradigm and a new architecture for way, a way that we can approach building blockchains that we call modular blockchains. And thus, the uh, project Celestia was born. Now, you're probably wondering, what is a modular blockchain and how does it work? So the core insight of modular blockchains is that if you distill down the functions of a typical monolithic blockchain into, their, into components, you can actually create separate blockchains that each specialize in that one function. And then those blockchains can actually be integrated together to achieve uh, even better scalability in all different kinds of properties that you couldn't do in a monolithic paradigm. So concretely, a modular blockchain is a blockchain that fully outsources at least one component to an external chain, consensus, data availability, or execution. So if you come from a Cosmos background, this actually should be pretty familiar to you because Cosmos is kind of the origi originator of like a modular approach to building blockchains, but they did it in the software stack. So in Cosmos, um, there is a Tendermint handles consensus. Uh, it's a software, uh, Tendermint is a software that handles consensus, and the Cosmos SDK is software that handles execution or the application logic of your chain. And then you combine those two different software components to build a monolithic blockchain. But Mo a modular blockchain stack takes that same design pattern and extends it into the protocols themselves. So you actually build a single blockchain that handles consensus and data availability and does not do any execution. And then you have a, another blockchain as a roll-up that runs on top of it, that runs the applications and the execution. And this results in a very different looking ecosystem. So in a monolithic ecosystem, each blockchain is like an island. It has its own independent consensus network. And so fundamentally, when you want to add a new blockchain to this network, you have to create a new consensus network from scratch. And in addition to that, because they're islands, the, it limits the security of the connections that you can create between them. Uh, in a monolith, uh, modular ecosystem, all the different uh, blockchains can share one common 
consensus and data availability network like Celestia. And so then when you want to add a new blockchain to the ecosystem, you just plug it into the existing consensus network. And you don't have to build your own from scratch. And you inherit all that security off the bat. And in addition to that, because all these execution layers, all these blockchains share one common consensus and data availability network, they can have truly secure interoperability. So in summary, uh, a modular blockchain architecture makes it as easy to deploy a blockchain as it is to deploy a smart contract. Because you no longer have to actually bootstrap that whole consensus network, which is high overhead. You also get scalability because data availability sampling makes it so the throughput of this overall network can scale with a number of nodes. So the more people that join the network, the more throughput you can have, the more execution, the more blockchains you can support. You also get secure interoperability because you have that shared security layer. And you still have sovereignty. So you, that, that execution layer that you deploy is still uh, sovereign to that community. The community can fork it, they can upgrade it, and they can customize it for their use case. So whereas Ethereum and Cosmos stacks on their own are not able to achieve all four of these properties, they're forced to make trade-offs. The combination of Celestia and Cosmos together can achieve all four of these properties at the same time and unlock, I think, the, the end game and the full vision for Cosmos. Now this is really, really exciting, but it's not here yet and it's still being built. So concretely, what is Celestia Labs building to make this a reality? First, we're building Celestia itself, which is the first modular blockchain network. Um, it's a consensus and data availability layer that is meant to enable anyone to deploy their own blockchain with minimal overhead. We're also building Optimant, which is uh, software that will help you build, uh, if, you, if you build a Cosmos SDK app or any ABCI compatible application or execution layer, you can plug it into Optimant and then deploy it on top of, a, of Celestia. And also, we're building, we're extending the Cosmos SDK to support uh, fraud proofs so that Cosmos SDK apps can actually be run in roll-up mode. Um, and last but not least, we are extending IBC to uh, be compatible with roll-ups. So the combination of all these, these things, we think is going to enable uh, us to have a world where you can write your application or your virtual machine, plug it into Optimant, deploy it on top of Celestia, and connect it via IBC to all the other blockchains in this ecosystem. And I think that's really going to unlock a lot of value. I want to give a shout out to Ismail Coffey, our CTO, who couldn't be here, and also our whole engineering team who are building all these things. Um, they're truly chads. And I want to end by saying that Celestia is truly humbled and honored to be able to contribute and participate in this ecosystem. And we really stand on the shoulders of giants. We wouldn't be able to build what we're building or even have the ideas that we are trying to pursue without the leadership of the Cosmos community and all the foundations that were put in, in place. And so just a shout out to all of you. And um, you know, we want to do our part to contribute back to this ecosystem uh, via public goods and via all the, the different things that we're building. And I truly believe that if we work together and we build this modular stack, then we will unlock the Cosmos endgame, which is not actually just an internet of blockchains, but in fact, an internet of modular blockchains. Thank you very much.